Hey guys, uh, I'm going to show you a demo here. Uh, normally we do this in, in class as a student activity, but hey, that's how it is. So what I have is a, a little toy uh, truck here, which can roll back and forth. Um, and uh, this plastic bag marks where the back bumper is. And I realize that doesn't really show up from the camera angle, but trust me, that's so that I can start it in the same place every time. Um, and then I have the happy and the sad balls, which you've seen before. The uh, happy ball bounces and the sad ball doesn't. That's how it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll these uh, down the ramp here. This is the ramp. It goes up that um, Yeah, it goes up that way. Um, I'm going to roll the balls down the ramp and have them hit the front bumper of the little toy car there. And we're going to see how far it knocks them backwards. So we're going to do the bouncy ball and the non-bouncy ball. And I want you guys to make a prediction. Um, which one will make the... Uh, the vehicle go further um, after it's been hit. Uh, we'll do the uh, the sad ball first. Uh, or is one going to make it go farther, or are they going to be the same? That's that's the question here. All right. So uh, you're going to have to take my word for it that I'm starting them from the same place, but uh, that's uh, that's how it is. So this is the sad ball, the non-bouncy one. We'll go with it first, and here we go. Okay, and it goes that far. And I'm going to position this little weight here so that on the camera, it marks where the front radiator is. So that's right about where the front radiator is for the, that was the sad ball, the one that does not bounce. Okay, great. Now I'm going to put the truck back where it was before. Same place. And now I'm doing the bouncy ball. Releasing it from the same point on the ramp. And here we go. And it goes a lot farther. I'll do that again just to make sure it wasn't some kind of fluke. Okay, here's the bouncy one. Goes a long way. And here is the non-bouncy one. This is the sad ball. Whoops, I pushed it a little bit after. Um, but it was going basically, I'll, I'll just go back here again. But. I, uh, I did push it when I picked up the ball. And that kind of threw us off a little bit, but still, it's noticeably not as far. There it is. It goes pretty much the same thing. So that's the uh, the sad ball, the non-bouncy one. This is the happy ball, the bouncy one. And the bouncy one makes it go significantly farther. Now, this is doubly surprising if that was not your uh, not your prediction, because in this case, the sad ball actually has more mass than the bouncy ball. So as it's rolling down the uh, down the ramp, the sad ball, the non-bouncy one, actually is carrying more momentum. And yet somehow the lighter ball uh, is able to push the, uh, um, the truck farther. Now, what you probably uh, have realized already is that the uh, when the uh, ball hits the truck, we have a collision. Um, in one case, it's mostly inelastic, and in the other one, it's more elastic. Uh, <laughs> and that means that the rolling ball is transferring momentum to the truck. Okay, so think about this for a second, but I'll, I'm going to explain it right now. So if you want to think about it a little bit more and scratch your head, pause it. Okay, so here's what's going on. The... Um, the ball, the, these are systems um, where conservation um, momentum is conserved, obviously, because momentum is always conserved. So whatever the whatever momentum the ball loses, the truck gains. Or conversely, an easier way to see it, whatever momentum the truck gains has to have come from the ball. Okay, so we need to think in terms of the change of momentum of the ball. And for the sad ball, the one that does not bounce, it hits the truck and stops. So it goes from having momentum to uh, um, that away in the downhill direction. It has momentum to having no momentum. So it's changed momentum is basically it has lost all the momentum it has. It goes from something to nothing. Now, in contrast, bouncy ball, the bouncy ball goes back the way it came. So its change in momentum is greater. It went from having positive momentum to having negative momentum. So suppose the non-bouncy ball had 10 units of momentum because it has 
10, it has a mass of 10 grams. Um, it goes from 10 units of momentum to zero when it stops. Now, the bouncy ball only weighs eight grams. So it would go from eight units of momentum to negative eight units of momentum, which is a change of 16. So by stopping, the non-bouncy ball gives up 10 units of momentum to the truck and pushes it. But the bouncy ball transfers 16 units of momentum to the truck and sends it farther. And that's the reason. It turns out that bouncing transfers more moment momentum than not bouncing. Bouncing actually matters. Uh, there's a technological device here. It's, it's kind of uh, archaic. It's obsolete, but uh, uh, this was quite the thing for a while. This is called a Pelton wheel. Uh, this is a picture of it here, uh, a Pelton wheel. And it's a water wheel. And at the time that it was invented and used, uh, this was the state of the art for water wheels. So being in New England, you guys are familiar with water wheels. This is one. You pour water onto the top. And since the, the wheel is now heavier on this side, it rotates. And then you uh, use that rotary motion to run your mill or whatever it is you're doing. Um, but when you think about it, you can get more efficiency out of this water wheel here, this conventional water wheel, by spraying water on it, like with a fire hose, rather than just gently pouring uh, water onto it out of a... Uh, um, uh, you know, out of a mill pond. So if you spray high pressure water on this, you'll get more power out of it. Um, but with this conventional water wheel, the water is just going to hit these flat paddles and spray out to the side, right? So the water is going to come down and it's going to spray out to the side when it hits the paddle. And it transfers momentum and it makes the, the thing turn and that's great. But what a Pelton wheel does, this one on this side, it's spoon shaped as you can see right here. So just like you've put, you know better than to uh, put a spoon underneath your kitchen faucet because the water comes out of the spoon and gets all over the counter. It makes the water go back the way it came. Well, by spraying high pressure water into the scoops here of the Pelton wheel, it makes the water turn around and go back the way it came. It basically makes the water bounce. And by bouncing, it transfers more momentum to the wheel and you get more, more, uh, more momentum transfer, more energy transfer. So this is, yeah, that's the same diagram right here. So you can see right here, they, there's a little scoop out of each one. That's to make room for the spray of high pressure water that comes in and then impinges on the sharp ridge between the two scoops. And it makes water spray out on each side. So, yeah, this was state of the art. These were invented in, uh, as I understand it, in California during, uh, um, well, gold rush days and a little bit after that um, for, uh, for water power and getting more, more, uh, more energy out of water power. Um, these are now obsolete. They found even better ways to do this. But for a while, yeah, this was, this was quite the thing. Bottom line here is bouncing matters. Uh, when an object bounces, it transfers more momentum than if it does not bounce. Um, other applications in this. This is why uh, airbags in your car, uh, they're actually manufactured with great big holes in them. So they inflate. And then when you hit the airbag, when you go forward in the collision, uh, there's a huge hole in the back of the airbag. So the air in the airbag gets forced out and it just collapses. If it was sealed like a beach ball, that would make you hit the airbag and then bounce back toward the back of the car. Um, which would transfer more, mo <laughs> excuse me, transfer more momentum to you, um, and it would be a greater force on you, um, and it would shake you around more. It would bounce you against your headrest. Um, by collapsing, an airbag keeps you from bouncing, and it, it, uh, it transfers less momentum to you, uh, reduces the violence of the collision. Okay, I hope you found that interesting and informative, and uh, we will see you next time.